Hey guys, Harry Wilmington here. And today we're talking about how cosplaying as an emotional man will make women pull away. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, uh, for those of you that don't know what cosplay is, I've looked it up here. Cosplay is a performance art where participants dress up as characters from movies, television, video games, and anime. The word cosplay is a combination of the words costume and play. So in other words, basically cosplay is when you are acting in a role that is not actually your role in real life, you know? And so I say this in reference to being an emotional man because there are a lot of guys out there that will want to be emotionally there for their woman and display all the feelings. And to women, it feels as though you're playing a role. It feels like the role you're taking on as an emotional man is not natural to what a man should be, at least in their eyes. And so to that end, I had a guy that wrote me recently and he's going through a situation where he's been talking to this girl, they work together, people in the office see them as being together. And so she's been going through some emotional stuff and he's been trying to counterbalance that by also being emotional and ex expressing feelings and whatnot. And he finds that she's been actually pulling away more and more as a result, and he's not understanding what's going on. So I'm going to read through his message. I'm gonna stop along the way and give this guy some pointers because you're not the first guy to go through this guy. We have all fallen for the trap of trying to be there by showing our emotional side to women, and we have learned over time that women just don't respond as positively to that as you may have been made to believe that they would. So he says, Harry, I need your advice. I'm 25 and she's 20. We met at work, had fun times, deep talks, and shared past life traumas, health issues, and future plans. I do want to say this. Uh, guys, trying to bond with women by expressing traumas you've had is not the best way to go. We don't want to try to trauma bond with women. We want you to be the guy that has gotten past that trauma has been able to move on from it and isn't dwelling on it. But a lot of guys will try to go into these negative things in an attempt to build a bond with a woman. Spoiler, you don't need to do that. You don't need to have her expressing her trauma or you don't need to ask her about her traumas of the past and you don't need to drudge yours out in order to build a relationship. So let's stop doing that altogether and build healthier relationships. If there was trauma in the past, we can talk about that stuff later, but really the first few months of dating should be like the fun times where it's mostly about happy stuff and not all this negative stuff. Anyway, so he says, everybody saw us as a couple, but we were not official. I hope you were not playing into that because sometimes as men, we have a tendency to think everybody else is saying we're a couple, so I should just act like that accordingly. And if she's not there yet, then that's not a good game plan. So then he says, then... There was a turning point. She failed her university test again for the third year in a row, which was a big thing to her. I tried to be supportive and boost her, and we both got emotional. Okay, question. Why are you getting emotional? She's the one that took the test, and she failed it. And I get that maybe you just don't want to see her unhappy, but the reality is this is her thing to be emotional about because she had went through the painstaking of studying and going for the test one time, two time, three time, and ended up failing each time, and she's in a funk. That is understandable why she would be emotional about that. But here's where guys mess up. They think if the woman gets emotional about something that you also now have to get emotional about a thing so that way you guys can bond and be connected and feel things together. And I just my experience, I have found in those moments, that's not what women need. Like in those moments, a woman needs your shoulder to cry on. She doesn't need you also crying for her. She needs somebody to help get her out of her funk, to make boost her spirits up. And that's all well and good. But you trying to get into emotions and saying, oh, I feel so bad for you. And, oh, let's cry together. This is not what we're looking for. But this is why I call this cosplay. Because men will think, okay, she's being emotional. I need to play the character now of a person that's also emotional about this thing. That way we can bond. So it ends up being a tactic to try to get her versus just being like, okay, realistically, like, She's emotional about it. I'm not, but she needs to have a sounding board so I can be that for her. Women need sounding boards. They need guys they can go to to be their rock to support them. They don't necessarily need guys that are going to also cry with them and feel things with them because, again, she's still looking 
for you to be the masculine portion of this situation. Her feminine side's going to make her cry about it and complain about it and do what she needs to do to get the emotions out about it. That's not your role in this. Your role in this is to be there for when that happens and then to plan some fun things. Hey, you know what? Let's go to dinner. Let's go see a movie. Let me, you know, rock and roll in the bedroom real good. Like, let me do things to kind of get you out of that. And then as you want to talk about it, yeah, she'll bring it up, but she should be the emotional one, not you. So then he says, she was nervous and anxious. And as a lover, I became overprotective and caring. I told her my feelings But she said, quote, I can't have a relationship right now. It's not about you. I'm too drained and tired. Things happening right now are too much for me. So you made the classic mistake that most newbies at dating make, which is you went to her thinking if you told her your feelings and emotions, and if you asked her for a relationship, that that was going to be the thing that A, pulled her out of her funk, but also was something that she wanted this whole time. And that because you guys talked for a couple of months at work and people saw you guys as already being together, that, hey, since people already see you as together, she must also feel the feelings that would make her want to be in a relationship with you, or at least call it that, and now's the perfect time. Now, after she's done failed this thing, this is the perfect time to ask her to be uh, in a relationship with you and have a title. And guy, that is not what's happening here. What I tell guys on this channel time and time again is that you will know that a woman is ready for a relationship with you when she comes to you and asks you about being in a relationship. And she'll do this in a variety of ways. She'll come to you and say, hey, so what are we? Hey, we've been talking at the office for a while and things are going great, but like, are you seeing anybody else? What do you think about me and you together long-term? Like, that'll let you know that she's already there. But because you jumped the gun and you're asking it during a time when she's going through all this turmoil, now it seems more like a selfish decision, more so than being there for her and figuring out what she needs. Because you're essentially going after what you want, which is you want the title, you want the relationship, you wanna feel emotionally secure that this woman's not just using you for your time by trying to lock her down. And that is not your job, that is her job. So now again, you are expressing feelings, you're asking for relationships, these are things to women that feel like you're cosplaying because you're basically cosplaying what they're supposed to be doing, which is they're coming to you asking for the relationship. They're coming to you telling you feelings. And what you're doing is giving off feminine energy, which to her is not going to be attractive. So even if she was building up towards that interest, you coming in too early is gonna make her think, crap, he's already there with his feelings and it's gonna feel like I'm dragging him along because I'm not there yet, I don't yet know if I'm gonna be there, but he seems to be wanting an answer right now, and I'm going through all this other stuff to where I haven't had time to sit down and think about things, and I'm guessing, if you guys are talking nonstop and texting each other all the time, that she hasn't gotten a break from you at any time to actually miss you, because I'm figuring you're working with her, you're probably texting her outside of the office, you're probably trying to see her as often as possible, she's had no time to actually sit down and think about but do I want him in a relationship? On top of the schoolwork she's going through and then the trauma with her not passing the class, this is all a lot. And then you're coming along and trying to be this emotional guy when in most women's experience, that's not the guys that they want and that's not the guys that they're trying to experience. Sorry, guy. So then he says, we already had arguments almost daily. I forced her to talk and get close, but she pushed me away even more. This is another thing you're doing is you're thinking, you're thinking like like this, right? Because most guys think, okay, I need her to talk about more emotional stuff and I need her to open up to me so that way I can prove to myself that she sees me as somebody that could be a potential partner because why would she share all this deep stuff with somebody else unless she was trying to get close to them and oh, she might not be doing it of her own accord. So now I have to force her to tell me those things, and that's gonna make her realize if she can tell me those 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 deep personal things that she really, really likes me, yeah, 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 guy. One, again, the first couple of months of dating should not be talking about anything traumatic. There should be no forced conversations. You're not trying to get her to talk about the deep depths of her soul in those first couple of months. The first couple of months are designed for fun, getting to know each other, hanging out, hooking up, etc. If you're trying to do more than that, if you're trying to like get her to dive into the depths of her soul to tell you stuff, that is not fun for her. Because here's the thing, 
women aren't trying to be all that confrontational. So when you're trying to force her to talk about things, even if she doesn't want to, she's probably going to do it because she's thinking, but I don't want to upset him or make him mad. So I'll tell him the thing that I really didn't feel comfortable revealing just yet. And so that now puts her in the, the lane of this guy's forcing me to do things I don't want to do. This doesn't feel comfortable. So that's why you're arguing all the time because you're trying to get her to tell you things that either she doesn't want to talk about or she's like, I didn't ever plan to talk about this thing because I'd gotten past this particular trauma and he wants me to bring it up, you know? And so, yeah, this goes back to you're the one being overly emotional. You should not be saying or doing things to women in the first couple of months that's going to result in arguments. I'm guessing the arguments are, you're saying, hey, tell me a thing. And she's like, well, I'm not sure I want to do that. And then you, oh, why won't you tell me this thing? You can just tell me, why can't you trust me? That's not going to make a woman want to eventually date you, all right? You have to be trusting that women will come to you at their own free will, and as they get to know you more and trust you more and become more comfortable with you, then they will, of their own accord, start revealing things. Women need time to build trust. And in their past, they probably had guys that they were telling all the things to early on that, that, that then got used against them in the relationship. So women are typically, as they get older, are doing more due diligence. Now this woman's 20, so we could say, hey, she's still in college, she's still trying to figure stuff out. But especially women that are that young, they are definitely not trying to live in the world of, I wanna tell and talk about and, and consistently say my traumas all the time. Like, that's not fair. You're making her be in a depressive bag all the time, and that's not fair. After two weeks of arguments, we had a talk on her last day at work. She said, she didn't want to talk because things were going to get harder. And so rather than listen to that, he says, I told her, quote, I know you're having rough times. You have goals and I support you. I want to be with you always. I don't want to lose you. And I'll never forget the connection and feelings we had. She just smiled and said, I pray for the best of both of us, for both of us. So honestly, when I read that, my first thought was like, yeah, oh, mm. Because it sounds very much like something a guy in a romantic comedy would say. Like, I know you're going through rough times, but I'll always be there for you and I'll never forget the connection. And again, this comes off as cosplay to women because it feels so dramatic. It feels so fake. It feels like the role that a woman should be doing, but except the guy's the one saying the lines. And so this is a disconnect because you got to think about things like sexual polarity, right? She, a woman would do these things and then you as a guy would do different stuff. A lot of which I go over in my program, the Introvert Dating Success Membership Academy, where I talk about things that masculine men do that turn women on. So you gotta ask yourself, in the world of sexual polarity, women are typically the ones that are more emotional and talking about feelings and wanting to be in love. Are you bringing sexual polarity to the situation when you're having the conversation about feelings and love? No, in, in effect, she's being a woman and according to her, you're also acting like a woman. There's no polarity here, which is opposites. She needs you to be the masculine so she can be in her feminine so things can come together and work. And right now, you are leaning heavily into your feminine by cosplaying as an emotional guy. Now, you may be hearing this and thinking, but Harry, I'm not trying to fake it. I, I'm legitimately an emotional guy. But you have to think about how you got that way. Because I'll tell you, my dad died when I was nine. I grew up around women, and women are mostly emotional. So I picked up the habit of thinking I need to be in my emotional bag when I'm talking to women. Oh yeah, I totally understand and feel why why you felt that way about that guy that banged you 36 times and, and then just left you. Oh, I feel so heartbroken for you. Oh, we should cuddle and talk about it. Like I was that guy. And I, I learned in a longer amount of time than I would like to admit that, oh, being that guy is the reason why I'm not getting women because the guys that dumped them are the guys that were showing more masculine traits. They, they just also had some negative parts. So I could just learn to do the masculine stuff I remove the negative stuff and then still be seen as the masculine guy. And that's what I've done for the rest of my dating career that has worked out immensely great. But the things I don't do anymore are write women poems or send, send them messages like, oh, I'll never forget the connection and oh, you mean so much to me and I'll always have you in my heart even if you leave me for somebody. Like, I, I don't give those speeches anymore because they, they don't work and women don't care and they don't make you seem masculine. Real talk. So we need you to stop doing this. So then he says, one week later, I texted her and we talked about how things were going. You, I already know what conversations you brought up. Uh, assume, aside from you just asking like, hey, like how are things going? You probably asked about, so where do you see us going? What's happening with us? What's going on? Not good. He says, I want to support her, 
but I don't know how to reach her. Maybe she's avoidant. She told me before, quote, I always get frustrated when I trust people, so I'm even pushing away my close friends. Well, that's a lie. She has to tell you that because she knows, women know that guys are logical people, and so they know if I just throw a logical thing at him or a logical comparison, then he won't take it personally. And so the number of women that say the same things to guys, if you got out of yourself and started listening to other guys' stories about what women told them, you'd realize they're all saying the same thing. So I have also had women say things like, oh, it's not just you. I ignore everybody when I'm mad. I don't trust people when I, when I get to know them. Oh, it's not you or personal. I've just, I've just been ignoring everybody. And they'll do that because they, they'll, they'll, they'll know if a guy hears that I'm doing this to everybody, he'll see that it's fair and won't take it personally. Guy, trust me, this isn't what it is. That's what she's telling you, so you'll buy it rationally that's not what actually is going on. And again, women learn how to do this very early on. So to you, it's gonna feel completely natural and normal. And trust me, she's run this line on previous guys that she no longer wanted to see. So then he says, I wanna chase her, but I feel like that's going to push her even more. I love her. She was never mean or disrespectful to me. I want a relationship with her and I'm ready to do anything for her. Well, the reality of guy is right now, I don't wanna say you're not in love, I want to say that you've been you've been hanging out with her at work for a little bit, so there's probably more leaning towards lust than love. But you know, as guys, we even though this doesn't really talk about a lot, we feel things very quickly. Like if a girl smells good, looks good, talks to us good, and we can picture ourselves boning her, she's pretty much pick up the litter for us. We already start feeling things, and we mistake that for love. But the reality is, you don't actually know her well enough to love her. You have not spent enough time in an actual relationship with her. Like most people, you need to get into a relationship with them and then still spend some time with them before you get to the I love you's. So like you could be dating a woman after three months, like be boyfriend or girlfriend and not say I love you until like month six. Because the reality is you need to spend time with that person and really get to dive deep into them before you get to feel those feelings. But you can't force that. That's the thing. You've been trying to force this woman to feel things, to admit the feelings of things, to talk about traumatic things. And these things aren't things that are going to win women. But more to the point, you've also been in your own way trying to emotionally manipulate the situation. And I say that in a sense of like, you're thinking if I say all these big emotions or that I have all these feelings, then by default of that, she's going to feel them too at the same time. And I have just learned that women take a bit more time to fully express love for a guy than most guys. Like we think after two or three dates, I'm already in there. Why isn't she deciding on me yet? And a woman could be there. She could be like, after two or three dates in, she's like, I really think this is gonna be the guy. I still gotta give him two more months because you know what? I've been wrong in the past and I wanna make sure that I have feelings that are great now, but I wanna make sure those are solidified because women, women know they can be feeling like all the feels for you by date three, but then you could start being inconsistent. And that's gonna make her lose trust. So even if she's feeling all the things by date three, she knows she needs to give you time to prove that you're gonna be the same guy on date 10 that you've been up to date three. And in women's history, guys fall off the cliff after like date four or five. So this is why, again, you expressing feelings doesn't matter. You saying, I love you, I wanna be with you, doesn't matter if she's not feeling it yet, if she's not there yet, if she hasn't finished doing her due diligence on you. And so the biggest mistakes you made were buying into that she probably already had a lot of feelings for you and then you trying to display all these emotions thinking, women say they want an emotional guy or a guy that's in touch with their emotions and so if I just show all these emotions and talk about them and feel them, then she'll like me too. And again, I don't know what your upbringing was but I just find a lot of guys get trained that being extra emotional equals getting women. And that is never true, all right? At most, it'll get her for like maybe two weeks or so, and then she'll start feeling that the, the lack of sexual polarity and feeling like, God, I'm emotional, but he's also emotional. Oh my God, why am I not turned on by him? So in this case, what do you do? Well, for one, stop trying to negotiate your way into her heart. Not gonna happen. Number two, I recommend this, okay? Go to my website. I have a book there called 10 Steps for Getting Back Your Ex. Now, she's not your ex yet, but she's, she's already get, saying things to you in phrases and words that are indicative of a breakup, right? And so in that book, it's, it, I wrote the book because I, I've, I've had times myself when I wanted to get a woman back 
And I just figured out the ways to do that in a way that wasn't gonna make me overly emotional. It wasn't gonna push her agenda in any way, but it gave her the space to think about me while I was bettering myself and then wanting to choose me when we got back into contact, all right? And so I've had plenty of people that have also gotten that ebook and been able to get their exes back. So that's what I'm saying. Go to the website, check out the, um, the preview of that book. If you like what you see, consider getting it. But for now, I'll say this, is that the worst move you can make at this point in time is to further contact her. You're probably, uh, well, you, I was gonna say you were seeing her at work, but she left work. So I'll say this, is that you contacting her consistently is not gonna make her wanna talk to you or see you, right? You need to leave her the heck alone and give her time to miss you and start focusing on literally anything else. And if she happens to reach out, then there are things you can do, which again, I talk about in that book, that you can do to refacilitate conversations, reposition yourself as a guy that is more of a fun guy than a downer, and you are allowing yourself time to get over being so emotional. But also, I would stress, really, really learn to be a more indifferent guy. I preach this on this channel consistently. Guys sometimes think I'm saying don't have feelings, and it's not about not having feelings. It's about the fact that you let this whole situation bother you too much, and you're too, you're too obsessed with trying to get her to feel things and to hear what your feelings are, and that should never be your position. Your position should be, I would like her in my life, but if it doesn't happen, I'll find somebody else. At 25, that is a hard message to hear. I was 25 once, I get it, 42 now. Trust me, there will be others, and if this girl doesn't work out, a year from now, you will have another girl that you're crushing on, and hopefully that one will work out. But if you don't learn the lessons from this time around, you're gonna also mess up that one. So consider what I've said, check out more of my videos, subscribe and like this video, check out the stuff at introvertdatingsuccess.com that I have to offer. I got eBooks, audiobooks, et cetera. But really, really, really don't contact her, learn to be more indifferent. And for the love of God, if she reaches out, don't do any lovey-dovey talk or feelings talk, all right? That is the easiest way to either get put back to the friend zone or have her pull away altogether. So hopefully this helps you out. Thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to give me a like and a subscribe and I will catch you guys on the next one. I'm out. Peace.